When I was young, I used to play these text adventure games all the time. In today's video, we are going to be building such an adventure game. This is a slightly longer game, so we are going to be splitting this into three parts. First, let's take a look at what the completed program would look like. So this is how the game would be. You get some text, it tells you where you are and you can type commands. So for example, if I say look, it would tell me something about the location where I am. If I say go up, then you go somewhere else. And then there are items out there. So like for example, there's a flashlight here. So if I say get flashlight, then it would pick that up. And I could see at any time what all I'm carrying. And if I go down, well, there are some batteries here. So let me get those. So it picks up the batteries. It combines that with the flashlight. And then now I can go ahead and go elsewhere. So if I go north, I go out. So there are more locations. And the goal of this game is to find a treasure. But you could make such games with you know any kind of locations any kind of items it's just up to your imagination so that's what the completed game is going to look like what we are going to do in this first video is just build a little bit of the basic infrastructure so we're just going to build the part where we can code in different locations and we should be able to move between the various locations and in the next video we'll handle things like having items and having an inventory and combining items things like that okay so let's get started with adventure now the first thing we need to do is we're going to be using this module cmd this module comes built in with python and it allows us to very easily build command line programs like this so in our game you get a prompt you type things and uh, depending on the command different things will happen and you get the prompt again and you just keep typing things interactively into the prompt until we quit so the cmd module is inbuilt and it allows us to very easily write programs like this okay so what do we need to do to actually build this program okay so let us just get started with building the command prompt part of it first so what we need to do is we'll create another class let me call it command executor and this is going to inherit from the cmd class which is in that module now this class has a few configurations that we can do so the first thing we'd want to do is set up some intro text so this text will be printed when our program launches for the first time from ancient times rumor exists of a treasure hidden under your house can you find it welcome to adventure so this is what we're going to code obviously you can code whatever you want make whatever story you want Okay, so that's our intro. So the moment we launch our game, this is going to be printed. And then we can specify how we want the prompt to look like. So I'm just going to use a greater than symbol for that. And we can now set up our executor. And this one, command loop is what we run once we run that then our command line program is launched okay let's save this and run it 
Okay, so there we are. That's our intro text. This command class already has some built-in stuff. So I can type help for example and it will show me what all commands are available. Help is an inbuilt command which is always available and right now that's the only command which is available. Okay, let me break. Now let us write our first command. Right, so we say do underscore quit. So the function should start with do underscore and whatever is the command name. And the quit command takes no arguments. What we'll do is we'll return true. So if a command returns true, that means we want to quit out of the program. If we return anything else, the program continues. Okay, so we can say, see this, and if we say help, we can see there are now two commands. There's the help command and there's the quit command which we just implemented. And if we type quit, then it quits out of our program. Now the quit command is marked as undocumented. So let's go ahead and do some documentation for it. So for that all we need to do is add a doc string to this method. So we'll say quit. This quits the game. That's it. We can now, if we type help, we can see that quit is no longer undocumented. It's now a documented command. And if I say help quit, then it prints out the doc string. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement some more commands. So the first command we want to do is look at your current location. So first, we need to define some location. Let's say in our game, we start in the house. So let's set up the locations. This will be a dictionary and each element in the dictionary will be one location. So our house, the house has a description. You are at your home. It is a nice place. Although quite messy. So this is the description of our house. And we can have many locations like this. Let's create another location which says garden. And the description for the garden is you are at the garden outside your home. Okay, so that's our garden. We've got two locations now, the home and the garden. And we'll start off our current location when we start the game is at home. Now let's go ahead and implement do look. So the look command will print out the description of the location that we are in. Look also does not take arguments. And let's put a description. Okay, so describe your current location. So let's first figure out which room we are in. So we look at all the locations and we take the current location. So this will give us the dictionary for our current location. That will print the description field of our current location. Okay, let's run this. So if I type help now, we can see that we've got a new command here, look. If I type help look, and describes the current location. Now I type look. So we start off at the home, and it says that you are at your home, it's a nice place. Suppose I change the code so that we start in the garden instead. Now when I say look, 
It says you are at the garden outside your home. You feel the warmth of the sun as insects buzz about. Awesome. So we are now able to be in a location and we can look at that location. Now the next thing we want to be able to implement is to move between locations. So we need a, another command for that. But we also need some way of telling what are all the valid locations. Right? So let's add another field here, which is exits. And this will describe what are all the exits for a location. So from home, where can we go? So we can go outside. And when we go outside, we will go to the garden location. And then we can give a description for it. The garden is outside. All right. So that's our description. So from the home, we can now go to the garden. And we do the same thing for the garden. So let's say from the garden, we can go inside and that will take us back to the home. Nice. So we have configured our exits. Now we have to write the code for that. So the first thing we want to do is when we look we should also print out what are all the available exits so the user knows where they can go. Okay, that's pretty simple. All we have to do is loop and we'll print it out. So an exit is a tuple. The first element of the tuple is what is the next location which it's connected to? And the second element is the description. So we want to print out the description. Okay. So now if we type look, it says you are at your home and then it displays the garden is outside. So that tells us that that's a place we can go to. All right. So now we need to implement the command for that. So let's add a new command, do go. Now we would type this command like saying, go outside, go inside, go up, go north. So this command will be taking a parameter and that would be the direction we want to go in. All right, so the way we want to do this is first we need to see if it's a valid direction. So for example, if we can go outside and the user types go up, then obviously that shouldn't work. So first we'll see if the current room has an exit. So we'll pick up all the exits and we'll pick up the direction from that dictionary. So current room exits would be this dictionary here and the direction as the key would give us the associated tuple for that direction. And in case the direction didn't exist, We print out, you can't go there. Okay, now once we get the exit, we need to then change the current location to the first element in the tuple. So if we are at home and we say go outside, then our new location is going to be garden. Okay, so we set the current location. And because current location is a global, we need to define that here. Later on, we'll change the code a little bit so that it need not be a global. But for now, we'll leave it like that. 
Then once we have gone to the new location, we probably want to describe that location to the user. So what we're going to do is we will execute one command. So this is an inbuilt function in the parent class. What it will do is it will execute the look function. All right, let's run. So first we look. The garden is outside. If we say go outside. Now we are at the garden and we can go back inside. Right? If you type something invalid, like say go up, it will say you can't go there. And if I type help, well, we've got another command there, go. So I can type help go and it will give the given direction. We just implemented three commands. We can look, we can quit, we can move around. And we've implemented a couple of locations that we can move between. Of course, you can have your imagination run wild, create multiple locations. We can have multiple exits for each location as well. So you can create some pretty complicated maps with this. So we'll wrap up this video here. And in the next video, we look at how we can handle items. You may have different items in different locations and you should be able to pick them up and combine them and do stuff with these items that we will handle in our next video.